considering the pressure and the global pressure, not just New Zealand pressure, how were you able to deal with that and sustain that level of excellence as well as that mental preparation? Well, the first thing is, you know, why do they coaches say that? Why do they want to be the only? Because it takes away the pressure. And that's their job, to take the pressure off their player. Um, as we've discussed, we didn't have that luxury. Like, if I turned around and said, oh, we're the underdogs, everyone would laugh at us. <laughs> you know, and, and having said that, I did try it a couple of times. But um, <laughs> I, I think the important thing to understand is once you acknowledge pressure, it's not so bad. It's when we isolate ourselves um, and we think we're the only person feeling what we're feeling, it becomes something bigger than it should be. And if we can normalise it and and um, identify what it is that's causing me to feel pressure, is it? Am I a player or a coach who who uh, feels scoreboard pressure? Am I a, a player? or a coach who who feels mistake pressure. Because what it does, it distracts us from the moment. If we live in the now, we can deal with what's happening because we have the skill set, we have the knowledge to be able to deal with it. If we don't, then that's a le- what we'd, you'd call a learning experience and we bank it so the next time it happens, we do. However, what, what, a lot of, uh, what happens a lot of times when... We, we get caught in that pressure moment as we get distracted. And we start thinking about the past or we start thinking about the future. Oh, I'm not going to be reappointed as coach because last time this happened, they coached, they sacked the coach. Or I'm not going to get re-selected because last time this happened, you know, I got dropped. And, and that's not healthy. So, you know, we've got to sit down and, and have strategy. So... For me, I would work out, okay, this is this is when I feel pressure the most. This is how I react. And sometimes I didn't know I was reacting like that. You know, I was very fortunate to have my wife, um, Tash, she's an ex-sports uh, person herself, and she could recognise and say, you're feeling pressure because of this, this, and this. And I go, no, I'm not. And she goes, no, you are. <laughs> and that would force me to look inwardly and say, well, actually, yes, I am. So now what am I going to do? And so having a plan before it happens, I always found was really good for me. I could, I could, um, right over, I could kind of feel it. I can, what's my plan? Okay, boom, 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 might be breathe, it might be whatever. And, um, I, you know, we try to do that with the athletes as well and, um, and get them to speak about their fears as well because it becomes normal. You know, it's a normal, someone will go, well, I'm feeling this one. Well, oh, yeah, so am I. Oh, well, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're fine. It can't be too bad. You're a superstar. If we, you know, look to 2023 as the rugby world so often does, um, we know the All Blacks will be there and thereabouts. What other country would you, from an All Blacks point of view, most fear, say from this part of the world, from the Northern Hemisphere, who do you think, if they get it right, come 2023, could be um, could be world champions? Well, I think France will be difficult. You know, you're playing them in the home. Um, country the biggest problem they will face is the same problem England faced having to deal with the pressure of playing in front of their own people um, the expectations that come with that will be uh, significant um, England will be tough always are um, you know, especially with Eddie coaching them he's he's not won that World Cup so he'll be madly uh, keen on doing so um, and that's something that I guess he will have to control. Uh, you know, uh-huh. sometimes wanting something so much can get in the way of actually achieving it. Ireland will have to overcome their World Cup hoodoo. They haven't actually, you know, they, they went in uh, to the last one as um, at one point as the number one side in the world and certainly didn't perform like it. Uh, so they've obviously got some mental issues to deal with there. Yeah, Scotland making good progress. Wales making good progress. So, you know, on their day, if they get their week right, when you get to that knockout, if you can get to the knockout stages, then anyone can win it because it's, a, it's a just about getting your week right and having a wee bit of luck. And and um, but you know, if I had to pick one, I would go France. I think they're, they're the team that I think will take um, a lot of beating. The building, um, there's a real desire. Haven't won one yet, and uh, you know, for a team 
for a country that has the rugby um, pedigree that it does to have not won one yet is not quite right. There's one other thing um, I'd like to talk about, uh, if, if you don't mind, and that's the women's game. We've talked about the men's game and, and the issues it has. The women's game right now has got the ability to to surpass the men's game if if they don't go and cloud it and start you know making the same mistakes the men's game's got because it doesn't have a calendar that's over subscribed. You know, but what it does need is games that show the skill and the flair that these women have got. Like the last of my daughters associated with them. Black Ferns and in the coaching role there, and she's attached to them as an intern. And so I've been watching those games particularly closely. And how good were the Roses? Like they, yeah. they they've yeah. spent the last two years, three years building a squad of players who are athletes. They're genuine athletes. Mm-hmm. Their skills have also grown. And um, you know, conversely, the Black Ferns have been stagnated because they haven't played for two years. And, and, you know, the, the difference was 50 points. And, you know, yeah. two great sides. But one's being invested in, the other one wasn't. And there's your result. And, you know, if we sat down and said, right, oh, well, why, are they, why could they be successful? Because they're not, there's no um, self-interest. It's all about, okay, what's the primary goal here is to play international games. And then competitions that are going to create international players. And if we could take that model and put it over top of the men's game, we'd get a better model in the men's game. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts.